Welcome back. Well, it's week four of our weekly awareness series on choices. As we end this series, Scott once again encourages us to respect ourselves, work hard, stay focused, and make good choices. Okay, so here we are with Michael Phelps. I suspect you know who he is. I suspect everybody on the planet knows who Michael Phelps is because of what he's done in the Olympics. No one has come close to the records he has set in the Olympics. Nobody's won more medals than him. 39 world records, 28 gold medals. Imagine the sacrifices he had to make to reach that ability of being the best athlete that, he's, that, that we've ever seen probably in the Olympics. Imagine how hard that had to be. How did he get there? Well, you know the answer to that. I've told you a thousand times. It's dedication, it's focus. But there's more. There's a deeper part of this story you're going to hear here in just a second. Pay attention to this, guys. Okay, so we're back with Michael Phelps. And I'm standing in front of a local pool, right? Where are you? Are you swimming in a local pool? Are you just focusing on where you are now? Or are you focusing on the future? You know, today will come and go, but where am I gonna to be tomorrow? I want you to start thinking about the future and where are you at? What are you doing now that's going to affect the future? What are obstacles that I'm not addressing here that are gonna be monumental obstacles if I don't address them now? Remember, we're talking about addressing problems. We're talking about overcoming obstacles. Michael Phelps did all those things. I can assure you when he started swimming in the local pool, look at this picture, what a little guy. If you'd have told him then, I'll bet in 10 years, whatever it is, you're gonna be an Olympic athlete. I'll tell you that you'll be the most winning athlete in the Olympic history. If you'd have told him that, he would have never believed you. But how did he get there? Dedication and focus. Because here he is later in life, right? In the Olympic stage. You can be anything you want but you've got to dedicate and you've got to quit thinking about here and start thinking about there. Start thinking about that future. Two quotes I want you to remember from Michael Phelps. It's okay to not be okay. As long as you follow it up with, it's okay to ask for help. Very powerful statements, guys. Last thing I'm going to tell you, look out for other people who may not be taking down those hurdles, who may be stumped by a hurdle, who may be held back because they don't know where to go or how to ask or, or who to trust, look out for those people too and bring them along with you. And like we heard with, with Tiger Woods, you know, sometimes it's hard for someone to come to us and say, hey, can I help you? Remember that? It's also hard from the other guy to say, someone's offering me help, am I gonna take it? It's okay to ask for help, be true to yourself, respect yourself. Okay, so let's, let's, let's back up. We just talked about Michael Phelps, but let's make sure you got this. So Michael Phelps came up with two great quotes. It's okay to not be okay, as long as you follow it up with, it's okay to ask for help. So how he came up with those was he locked himself in a hotel room, remember, for four days. And he was in a dark place, and he, and, and he was contemplating really dark, bad things. And, and lucky for him, he dug deep. And he came up with those two quotes, and then he came out of that and asked for help and got it and has done some great things, right? So let's back up again. Let's go back to Tiger Woods. We saw Tiger Woods at an all-time low, yeah? We saw Robert Downey Jr. at an all-time low. And we saw Michael Phelps. We've heard of Michael, Michael Phelps, the story of hitting a low. Do you think any one of those three guys hit that low like that? Absolutely not. They had bad choices. They had things going on inside they didn't know how to deal with. And, and they went to dark places and they went to substances to fix them. And instead of fixing the problem, it made the problem worse. Yeah. And so if you look at this rock and you see it's broke, do you think that rock broke overnight? It absolutely didn't. Something found an, a fault, a flaw in that rock, and it exploited it and created that crack. That weakness was exposed. And then over time, the weakness continued to get exploited and exposed and it continually cracked larger, large until it broke the rock. It's the same thing with a person. I've got something going on inside. I don't know how to deal with it. I go to a substance thinking it's going to fix my problem when in reality it makes it worse because with that substance is going to come negative consequences. 
And those negative consequences are going to increase what this pain is. My dependence on what I'm taking to address this is going to become bigger, bigger, bigger. What this is doing, guys, is it's breaking us. And it happens over time, just like this rock. So I want you to know this. You need to dig deep. You need to address what's going on inside. Don't shy away from it. Address it. And going to a substance is never going to work. Ask for that help. Remember Michael Phelps. It's okay to ask for help, guys. So guys, look at this. There's the problem. Let's say that that little monster right there, that is my problem. That's what's going on inside of here. That is my anxiety, my angst, my, my depression, my whatever it is. That's it. That's the problem. So what happens when I don't isolate my problem and attack it, solve it? What happens when I turn away from my problem and I cast my attention elsewhere? What happens to my perception of what the problem is? Well, right here's what happens. This is exactly what happens. If I don't address and single out my problem, my perception of the problem becomes much, much bigger. So if I was having a hard time just dealing with it as a one thing, well, now it's this huge thing. How much harder is that going to be? And this is just my perception. Well, I want you to know this, that perception left unchecked becomes mythical and grows. So if I don't isolate my problem and address it, my perception of the problem becomes much, much worse. And so if I was scared of addressing this, I'm going to be horrified at trying to tackle this. And by not addressing the problem, the problem actually does become worse because I have more anxiety. I have more angst. This thing builds all the bigger lure for me. If someone says, try this, it'll make that go away. Can you see how this hook happens? How so many people fall for the trap. Remember this slide when you're dealing with something, when something is bothering you, when there's a problem, isolate the problem, address it. Because if you don't, it's going to become much, much bigger. So you got to know where you're going to go. Who can you trust? Ask for help. Respect yourself, guys. So guys, this is the recipe that's so extremely dangerous. I've been talking about pain. So I have pain. I go to my drug of choice to get relief. And that will work. In the short term, pain plus drug of choice equals relief. That formula will make you very popular sometimes. It'll make you very successful. It will make you think that you're in control, that this is... This is good. This works. But what will happen over time is when I take that drug of choice to try to get that relief, what will happen is I'll get shorter term relief. And as a result of shorter term relief, I'll have negative consequences. What's going to happen to pain? Pain's going to increase. So if I started with this much pain, I go down around this cycle a few times, which I call the tornado and that pain becomes much, much bigger. And I keep going back to my drug of choice to try to fix the problem, when in reality, my drug of choice is making the problem worse. Guys, we've been talking about this for a few weeks now. I call this the tornado. And this is dependence leading to addiction. This is the tornado that's so hard to get out of. So how do you fix this problem? First of all, don't start. But secondly, if you're in this, You've got to replace drug of choice with something solid, something real. And it's not a substance. That's going to be a someone. That's going to be a program. That's going to be a counselor. That's going to be a something that's solid and true and pure. It's not going to be a substance. So guys, you got to know where you can go to get help. you got to know who you can trust. It may be a parent. It may be a friend's parent. It could be a teacher, a counselor, a coach. It could be any number of things. But you got to know where you can go to get that help and where, where you can trust someone. There's not going to try to keep you in this. Because somebody giving you a substance trying to lock you into this, 
And that's not going to end well. Love yourself, guys. Know where you can get help.